Hello, everyone. Welcome to SABCS Snippets. My name is Virginia Kaklamani uh, from UT Health in San Antonio, and I have uh, with me today uh, Dr. Sarah Sammons from uh, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. So today we're going to be talking about the year in review and what excited us about this year. Sarah. I think there's a lot to be excited about um, for our patients, um, namely, mostly in the hormone receptor positive HER2 negative space. We have a new endocrine therapy, our first oral CERT approval with l early in the year in ESR1 mutants. We have a new targeted option for patients with PI3 kinase AKT P10 uh, alterations with Capiva Sertib. And then we also have um, a lot of movement in the antibody drug conjugate space. So we have a patient, uh, she has metastatic disease, she was on a CDK46 inhibitor, and unfortunately now she has disease progression. How are you thinking of treating this patient post-CDK46 progression? So I think we've learned a lot this year about how to approach that patient. Um, I'm thinking about two things. I'm thinking about their real-time genomic profile. So I'm going to be getting some sort of next generation sequencing, probably circulating tumor DNA, because I wanna know about ESR1 mutations. I wanna know about the PI3 kinase, AKT P10 alterations. And then I'm also going to look at the patient. Um, I'm gonna look and see how long um, they had benefit from their first line CDK4-6 inhibitor because I think we learned from Emerald that that's very important. Um, and then also are they you know, really dramatically progressing viscerally? Um, so those are you know, a lot to think about in that space, but I think next generation sequencing, how long, um, how long they were on their CDK are really at the top of the list. And I think that's important because we have to establish is this patient's disease still endocrine sensitive or is it now endocrine resistant? In which case we can move to an ADC and we'll talk about that as well. Yeah. Um, and then obviously toxicity, right? When we're starting to add uh, two medications instead of one, we're adding on to toxicities and we're talking about potentially rash with capovestorative uh, diarrhea, maybe hyperglycemia. Those might become issues later on. Of course, yeah. So, you know, in a patient that has long duration on their CDK, let's say two, three years, they have an ESR1 mutation, I do think Elicestrin is a great option. Now, if they have a PI3 kinase mutation, um, you know, Capiva Sertib and Pulvestrin would be a great option for them as well. Um, and there are just more options to come, so. And then we move on to our third approval for the year, Trastezima uh, Duraxan in that HER2 low setting. Um, when, how often do you check tumor for uh, HER2 status? We have in the first lines, in, 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 in initial diagnosis that we possibly have in that first line metastatic disease. If both of them are zero plus, do you recheck? So I do. I, you know, I think we've been very impressed um, at HER2 low as a new biomarker, not necessarily a new subtype. Um, but and HER2 works quite well for patients that have HER2 low. And what we learned from the tissue data from Destiny Breast 04 was that it didn't matter when they were HER2 low. It didn't matter if it was in the primary setting. It didn't matter if it was three to six months ago. It didn't matter if it was a real-time biopsy. They still had some benefit. And we're still learning and teasing out who really derives the most benefit in the HER2 low space. But if I have a HER2, that is the patient I'll biopsy. The patients that's zero, zero, I will rebiopsy them to see if it's an option. If they've had a one or a two at any point in their disease course, then I don't think we need to rebiopsy. Yeah. And I would offer it. Yeah, and I think it's also important to talk to the pathologist. We know that there's this ultra yeah. low category, but then we also know that some of the patients are really going to be zero, like yeah. all, no expression. In that case, it's unclear how, how beneficial TDXT is going to be. It's true. And it also just speaks to the fact that we need better assays and, and there's a lot more coming down the line there. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Well, thank you for, for being here today. I hope uh, everybody enjoys the conference and we'll see you soon. Thank you.